Hello and welcome back to another Elden Ring video. Today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the Garden of Eyes mod, as well as provide some context to the mod creator himself, as he has a history of paywalling and stealing content for profit. I will give my thoughts on the mod first, since most of you probably don't care about the community drama. As always, I'll try to be as objective as possible when reviewing the mod. If you don't know what Garden of Eyes is, it is an overhaul mod for Elden Ring, which in theory means it is overhauling every part of the game. Garden of Eyes, which I will now abbreviate as GOE, does not do this. In fact, the only new things it has added are 3 new classes, 30 reskinned weapons, 30 armor sets ripped from other Souls games or reskinned Elden Ring armor sets, 50 new spells, a handful of reskinned torrent mounts, along with 4 new bosses. This mod costs $5 a month, and you need to pay that to use their launcher. In addition to this specific mod, you get a handful of other low quality mods and exclusive in-game wallpapers and screenshots. Now if this sounds like a good deal, let me put it into perspective. The Convergence mod offers 27 new classes, with each new class now having its own starting location in the world, dungeon overhauls, new bosses, new enemies, dozens of new weapons, hundreds of new spells, extensively revamped areas, and to top it all off, this mod is 100% free. You just download it from Nexus Mods and you are good to go. There are other overhauls on Nexus Mods, like the Ascended mod, Elden Ring Reforged, and Sword Mastery, and of course they're all higher quality than what Garden of Eyes currently is. The point is, there are many overhauls for Elden Ring, and with the majority of them being higher quality, there isn't any reason to spend money on an inferior overhaul like GOE. If you're looking for other Souls game overhauls, there are a few that stand out, namely Convergence for Dark Souls 3, Champion's Ashes are the best Dark Souls 3 overhauls available right now, however there is a new one coming out, Arch Thrones, that is shaping up to below every overhaul from every Souls game, including Elden Ring Out of the Water. Despite years of development time, they are releasing it for free, and they are releasing a demo of it sometime this month, which is October. So now on to the actual review of GOE. It is very similar to Vanilla, since as I said, it only adds 4 boss fights, which I will cover later. The weapons they added are very uninspired, with most being reskins of existing weapons, or weapon animations and models being ripped from previous games, which combined with the forced monthly payments, means that it's in violation of the Terms of Service as it sells from software assets for profit. The armor is much the same, with them being ripped from other Souls games or being recolored and retextured existing armor sets. This is extremely lazy since most of the armor sets and weapons added are poorly balanced. For example, they made one of the best setups in the game, Power Stain Spears, extremely fast. This, alongside their already high damage, makes them the best setup in the game, a very hard to miss balance oversight. On the topic of balance, the three new starting classes start in new locations, which is a good concept, except that GOE doesn't balance these areas with that in mind. What this means is, unless you start with Starcrawler, you will be transported to a late game area, unable to find smithing stones to level every weapon, and you are one shot by most attacks. Starcrawler has the benefit of starting Kaled, which doesn't sound like much of a benefit, but you are at least in the open world and free to go back to Limgrave and progress as normal. The other two classes are stuck in dungeons and are unable to leave without first killing a boss that is meant for late game. The Nomad has it the worst, as you are stuck in the subterranean shunning grounds until you kill the Frenzied Omen, a boss that was taking a good bit of time to defeat even on my rune level 150 character. On top of this, Lindell's soldiers do not drop runes, and take at least 4 critical hits to kill, meaning the only way to farm before the boss is to kill skeletons that drop 62 runes apiece. On the flip side, Firemonk starts off considerably better, since the enemies at Mount of the Giants at least drop runes, and being so late in the game, they drop upwards of 2000 runes. They're also much easier to kill. The boss for the Fire Monk is an NPC fight, and you are able to bypass the fog well and jump into the open world, however, you can't follow the regular progression route because you don't have access to the roll medallion, which means 
From what I can tell, you have to kill Fire Giant in order to progress. On top of this, none of the open world was changed from what I could tell, meaning the only relevant things this mod adds for progression is extremely unbalanced. Finally, the bosses. Currently in the mod version that I played, which is 1.09.5, there are four new bosses. The first is a reskinned Bullet Hell Crucible Knight fight that doesn't add anything notable compared to the other fights outside of a near impossible to dodge phase transition and fire SFX on some moves. Next off, there is the replaced tutorial boss, the Asylum Demon, which is a reskinned existing Urtree avatar, which is already a reskinned Asylum Demon from the original Dark Souls. It is like an endless cycle of lazy reskin content that doesn't enhance the game whatsoever. The next boss I already talked about a bit, the tutorial boss for the Nomad, Frenzied Omen. It's a fine boss fight if it wasn't in the starting area, but it's still just a reskinned Omen with a mana special effect and uses the Frenzied Troll Manus AoE. The final boss fight that they added is the Godskin Duo fight, which replaces the Godskin Duo fight. No. I am not joking. This duo fight takes Ornstein and Smo, and more or less takes their exact animations from Dark Souls 1. It is the most creative fight they have implemented, however the fight is really buggy currently and if you die to them, it will count that you killed them. The second phase of the fight involves a reskinned Vort fight from Dark Souls 3, or a reskinned Nameless King fight depending on who you kill first. Again, the boss suffers from bullet spam and particle effect spam so it's hard to see what's going on. Ultimately, this mod suffers from the modder shouldn't LARP as game developers just because they're capable of it syndrome. I strongly advise against purchasing or engaging with Garden of Eyes. I have personally played through this entire mod so you don't have to, and I can confidently say that it lacks any meaningful purpose, offering no gameplay incentives or satisfying outcomes. This mod provides an exceptionally poor Elden Ring experience that consumed hours of my time. It would be making a much wiser choice to experience the wonderful Convergence mod instead. In conclusion, this review of Garden of Eyes highlights its striking similarities to the vanilla game with only four additional boss fights. The added weapons and armor are lackluster, often appearing as reskins or borrowed assets from previous titles. Violating the terms of service due to the monetization of from software's assets. These items are poorly balanced and some create overpowered setups in the game, revealing a significant oversight in terms of gameplay balance. The introduction of these three new starting classes, while an interesting concept, creates a frustrating experience for players, as the mod fails to balance these classes' starting locations adequately. Furthermore, the mod introduces four new bosses, which, unfortunately, fail to bring any innovation to the Elden Ring experience, offering little to enhance the game. Many of these fights suffer from a range of issues, making them difficult to enjoy. Let me reiterate, please do not buy or play Garden of Eyes. I played the full mod so you never have to. It has no reason to exist, no rewards, or payoff for gameplay. This is a genuinely awful Elden Ring experience that took hours to complete. Just play Convergence instead. Now, turning our attention to the surrounding controversy. It's worth noting that a comprehensive examination of this individual's actions before the release of Elden Ring can be found in a detailed video by Hellkite Drake and this Reddit comment, which I'll provide links to in the description for those interested in a more in-depth perspective. In brief, Garn of Eyes is, in fact, Santa Disc, a figure who faced significant community backlash and subsequently rebranded himself as Omega Fantasy. His contentious history dates back to his involvement in the Dark Souls 2 community, where he was accused of profiting from the work of other modders and gatekeeping various mods and tools. An examination of his past content and tweets by a fellow Souls modder reveals that Garden of Eyes did not discover certain cut Dark Souls 2 models himself, but instead solicited them from other modders. He would then create content around these discoveries and initially withheld proper credit until confronted by others in the community. More recently, Garden of Eyes sold seamless co-op within his for-profit mod launcher without obtaining permission from the developers of seamless co-op, Luke and Dalvik. 
This move understandably provokes frustration and resentment from the seamless co-op creators, as their mod has always been freely accessible to the community. When Garden of Eyes was consequently banned from the seamless Discord server due to his accusations of theft and deception, he attempted to paint himself as the victim. However, it's important to view his claims of victimization with skepticism, as they appear disingenuous. This individual has been known to manipulate the narrative, employ deception, alter statements, and delete evidence in his pursuit of financial gain. It's also important to note that he pays people on payroll to make most of the content for his mods. Within my knowledge, the fact that he does this isn't really labeled anywhere, so it looks like the credit is himself on the videos. Within the modding community, Garden of Eyes is widely disliked, with many finding his behavior unethical, exemplified by his attempt to monetize mods that others offer for free. His content often utilizes clickbait tactics, and his actions have led to a deeply negative perception, particularly among those familiar with the modding scene.